Hello, good evening, guys. Hope everyone's having a good day. It's Captain Q with another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good one. And I'm here with another guest. I'm just gonna let him introduce himself. <laughs> yeah, what's up, guys? My name's Nemesio, also known as Big Bro Tech on my platforms that I go on. And uh, yeah, man, I'm a graduate from Course Careers. I got into IT literally with no skills at all. Uh, I worked at FedEx. FedEx driver and I took this course that my friend put me on about. I didn't know anything about it. And in one month, I was actually able to transition into an IT job at Disney, which is pretty crazy. That is awesome. That is freaking awesome. And I'm gonna ask you a, a lot of questions because I like to like dig dig into more information on the person as we as we go throughout the, this whole interview process. Yeah. So for for you, like how much has being a delivery guy help you with soft skills going into IT? I just want to throw that in there. I like to I like to hear your your thought process on that. There's a lot of things that can, that transition, believe it or not. You're using software while you're doing deliveries and um you know you're using and this is beyond soft skills this is just all sorts of things but you know you're using the software while doing deliveries you're learning how to troubleshoot the software learning how to figure out problems while you're on a delivery and then when you're dealing with customers you know you might drop off a package and it could be damaged and you have customers chasing you down and you have to be able to deal with someone who's in your face angry at you dealing with uh, you know, trying to deal with someone who's got their dog out there and you're not comfortable with maybe going out and you have to figure out how to navigate the situation, but still be professional. So now nah, there's, there's so many different things that, that translated into what I do now. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. That is awesome. I'm going to like, I'll go on a time machine. Like I'm not sure if you watch Dragon Ball Z. Oh but, yeah. Um, the hyperbolic time chamber. You know, yeah, how it goes forward. We're going to go backwards instead. And so you were in FedEx, right? So you went, you worked at FedEx. So I want to dig into this more. Why did you get into a job in FedEx before you got into IT? Like, what, what was the deciding factor? Or is it like paying bills? Or you like, went to yeah, was, that. it was COVID, man. Um, I was jobless. I lost my job. I, I was doing, before I got into FedEx, you know, I was doing sales. And then I got a job doing valet. You know, I'm 21, 22 at this time. Next thing you know, COVID hits, you know, after COVID's done, all of a sudden I'm 24, I don't have anything going on. And then, you know, actually I was like 23 when I got into to FedEx. And then I got an opportunity from a family friend, like, hey, do you want to be a driver? It's making more money than I, you know, had made before, which was $135 a day. I thought that was, a, I thought that was big money at the time. And, uh, you know, I did that for three i did that for two and a half years and um i went from 135 dollars a day up to 145 a day that was how i, was, I jumped uh, in that time period. And yeah, man, I just thought it was a, an opportunity. There was no other jobs available. It was a, a needed job, and I took it. Yeah, I could, I could totally relate, relate to you. I come from a restaurant background, so it was like, oh man, making $10 an hour, that's a lot of money. And then you take it and then you go into other, you look at other jobs and other fields and you see that there's more money in that. You say you worked in sales before. Sales pay is really good, especially when it comes to IT. I'm not sure what type of sales you work, but one common thing that I always tell everyone, and this is going to sound really wonky and cheesy, um, is the fact that every, at the end of the day, everyone's a salesperson, especially if you go for a job interview, especially when you're trying to sell yourself. Um, you have to know how to sell yourself. You have to know how to talk to people. And also they have to like you. If they don't like you, they're not going to hire you. It's just the reality of applying for a job and getting a job interview. So it's so true. Going back to you again, we spoke earlier before before this conversation. You told me that FedEx, unfortunately, you 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 were injured. Like it, it's yeah, uh, you were injured. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. So when I was going through FedEx, you know, I was just doing the best I could. You know, make, with the money that I was making, I was living at home. So, you know, I'm 23 to 26. No health benefits, nothing like that. No PTO, no benefits of any kind. I'm just making my daily salary. And all of a sudden, I slip fall with the package down the stairs of the FedEx truck, reached back, shoulder came out. You would have thought I stepped on a landmine. I was on the floor rolling around, had to call my mom. She had to come get me. I had to leave the truck there. Ended up, my mom took me to the hospital, had to get it set. It was like, okay, pray that doesn't happen ever again. That was a terrible day. I was screaming in the hospital, you know? Okay. Well, a year later, same exact thing. I'm out in some country road. Luckily, my route was close to my 
my house and I'm walking, feet were wet from the grass, slip. It was not even that hard of a fall. Bad boy came out again. This time the ambulance had to come get me and um, I had to get surgery uh, on the shoulder. I was on workers comp for about nine to 10 months. Doctor told me there's no more labor jobs ever in your life again. So forget about doing anything that takes manual labor. Your left shoulder, if it comes out again, you know, you could maybe not be using your, your arm ever again. So I had to find something new. That makes sense. I had, I had a friend almost similar to, to your story where he worked as a doorman because he did football and he did boxing. During football, he dislocated his shoulder several times. His shoulder has not been the same ever since then. He does therapy every week. So it's like it's therapy every week for her shoulders and, and she's not allowed to do any like like crazy labor work, which is why he just became a doorman and um Yeah that was that's it for him. After that I was just like I can't really do much. So exactly. you have to kind of you have to be able to adapt to the situation that comes at you. And I wasn't gonna be living at home. I'm twenty six years old, injured. You know, I've nothing I have nothing, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I've tried sales, I tried college, I tried everything, nothing's working. So, you know, I was really down, but, you know, luckily the next chapter went pretty well. And then how, how did you find out about course careers? Like, what did you see? What, how, what, like, what did you just randomly research it? Did someone tell nah, you about it? How that, how that worked? Yeah, nah, I, it was completely told to me by a friend and I'm super like hesitant, super spec, uh, speculative. Like, I'm not going to believe you. And, well, this kid, this is one of my best friends. He disappears for two months, comes back, and he's got a $60,000 IT job at some bank. Talk to me about IT. Talk to me about all these things that he did. He's, you know, kind of an introverted person. Talks to his friends and stuff. But, like, you know, just seeing, knowing, like, he went and locked away and got these skills. And now he's getting paid this money. And he's, like, you know, he's telling me about it for about a year, actually. And uh, before I got injured, when I got injured, it was like, I was like, dude, tell me more about this. Like, I need to know more. I saw he did a vid interview um, with the creator of the course. He was one of the first people that actually took the course. You know, I saw how the creator spoke. He was super just soft spoken, like a genius, but he didn't make things too, too heavy. It was really everything was light in like a cheat code. And so, yeah, man, I ended up coughing anything that I had up and I took a shot on it. And basically it was asking him questions as I did the course, but you know, I did it extremely quickly because I was on my last month of workers comp payments. After that, I was going to be moneyless and, you know, getting to 30, man, I needed to do something. That makes a lot of sense. And, and I tell everyone like, do your homework before you purchase a course, do your due diligence before you purchase something and then figure out who that person is and see if they're real or not. Do some information, do some research on them on LinkedIn just to figure out whether they're legitimate or not and go on websites, go on everything, Reddit, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere figure out who they are and if they're right. real or not and i don't want to throw this guy under the bus so like, there's people that oh yeah we get you a cyber security job in like two months or three months you know like full of crap right <laughs> i was like it's there's like a lot of scammers out yeah there's a lot of scammers out there so it's like like you trust one person and they, they they end up being a scam and then you're like i guess everyone else is a scam so why the hell am i gonna invest money on this but that's not necessarily true. In some cases, some, sometimes you find someone, you really like them, and they actually have some good information. So you want to keep an open mind when it comes to some some of these things, if that makes sense as well. So, 100%. Yeah. And for you, and, and I know, because I'm, 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 I'm buddies with course careers, but also Josh Medicor. And it's just a random question to you. Like some of the stuff that they teach you, like, for example, Active Directory, I'm pretty sure you use that in your job. That's very, like, universal. Yeah. Were you sure you use that at your current job? Yeah, and, uh, there's so many different things, especially the virtual machines and just learning how to use that and make test environments. We use that all the time. When you went on your job interview, and I tell everyone, like, you want to present projects, you want to present something you actually did, because this is Catch-22. I have no experience. How am I going to get experience? And how am I going to get experience and no one wants to hire me? Exactly. So it's a, it's a Catch-22. So it's very important that you build a portfolio, you build something, whether it's through GitHub or through something through Azure, AWS GCP and you add that experience on your resume and, and just make it make it relevant to the job you're applying for like whether it's IT support desktop support service desk and when you go in a job interview you, you have to show the hiring manager that you actually know how to do that and if you do they're going to be impressed by you and I'm pretty sure that's what happened to you when you went on the job interview oh yeah it's actually kind of crazy because my manager and this is my second position so this is after Disney now I'm, I'm in a little bit higher I'm a remote monitoring and management engineer that's what my title is but um, my manager found out about my TikTok and you know we were just talking about it and 
he was like, wow, you know, it's crazy how qualified you are. And, you know, you came from FedEx just a little while ago. I kind of was like, oh, I need to let remind him, you know, I'm, you know, I know my stuff, but I was just letting him know, you know, yeah, man, I really focused on building a ticketing system from scratch and setting that, you know, setting all the architecture up for that and then do an active directory on a server and then set, setting up a server OS and virtual environment and just was going through all the different things I did. He, you know, he was really impressed. It was like that for all my interviews, you know, being able to explain to these, these people that are technical, a lot of people, when you do these jobs, you're just clicking and it's a lot of clicking and knowing workflows when you can speak it out and speak about what you're actually doing. And Hey man, I did this and it was setting up this. And honestly, it looks better than some certifications or even some college education, because a lot of people, they will just become like theory question and then they study it and that's they can just spit it out but they can't do anything and when you can do things it's extremely impressive yeah 100 percent agree with you and, and it's a little more theory versus what you you actually did and a lot of people, a lot of people like that i already like i said this a thousand times it's like you get you could get Azure for free, AWS for free, ECP for free, create a lab from there. For ticketing systems, you could create a ticketing system on your own. You get Jira, ServiceNow. There's also goodness. Oh my goodness. Like so many. So it's like, why not take the opportunity to learn, right? The more you learn, the better for you and the better for your opportunities when you go and apply for a job. And also it looks good on your resume. Like I don't want you going empty handed, right? You go into a yeah. job, you know, absolutely nothing. Like how are you going to sell yourself and what are you going to showcase the hiring manager? So it's very important that you have something on the piece of paper and then the other thing what you said earlier which is very true is learning how to talk about it and try to be try to remember who you're talking to as well because um i had a one comment like two three weeks ago and this guy told me that the hiring manager didn't understand what he was saying and i'm like were you t were you technical during the interview and he's like yes i'm like in some cases some of the hiring the managers recruiter. you know yeah. so and they're, they're not technical so if you're if you're super tech you're super duper technical they're not gonna understand what you're saying and then i'm like i have no idea what he's talking about and they're gonna be confused so you have to know your audience just like you have to know who you're interviewing right so very important you know or know your interview if it's an it manager that's super technical then you guys could go back and forth right and be technical but if it's someone that is like from hr or whatever then they like, i have no idea what you're talking about yeah no, you need to know it yeah you got to tailor your responses to the your audience exactly yes exactly so that that stuff is very important I'm, and i'm saying that here in this video because it's happened to people that i know that that yeah i did the labs and everything and i got the interview i'm like so but how are you interviewing right exactly if everyone goes for a job and they can't get a job they can get the interview but they can't get the job like what are you doing wrong right yeah. so for someone that's brand new that's watching today's interview sometimes you have to take a step back from a 360 perspective look at everything from a 360 perspective figure out what you're doing wrong maybe it's the way you're answering your questions maybe it's the way you're portraying yourself maybe it is your personality it could be so many reasons why they're not giving you the job or they're not giving you a chance so those things are very important when it comes to getting into a job if that makes sense so 100 percent 100 percent i think uh when you're when you're speaking with anybody um you're speaking with a manager who's technical you're speaking with a hiring manager i just think it it all comes down to having enough substance to kind of blow their minds i think that when you get an interview it in my mind it should be almost like a guaranteed once you get those interviews you should be able to easily convert those into jobs and it's just simply by having that experience and then being able to talk about it and being able to answer easy technical questions like what is dns you know explain what an ip address is do you know what log analysis is things like that and then being able to actually expound on it if you don't know how to answer something explain hey i've never done not log analysis before however i know what logs are this is what a log is and i'm excited to learn more about log analysis and i know where to find knowledge on that being able to answer it like that instead of no i don't know what log analysis is is a lot better so yeah and for you like you come from from working in fedex right you don't even have an it background like just like me i worked in restaurant right which yeah. kind of mind-blowing to some people like really like can you actually get a job in it with not having an it background yes you can mm -hmm. but like for you like how big was the learning curve when it comes to learning it um i think you know i had which is probably going to be like a lot of people the luck of coming into a life where things were grow how do i wear this things were becoming more technical as we got older with phones and computers and ipads and things like that and xboxes and so as my whole life i've always used you know these things and known how to work my way around these things so i think there was always a ground level knowledge of those things and then being able to kind of picture how everything works in my head i feel like the learning curve was 
high, but it was doable or it was steep learning curve, but it was doable because the more I was able to put things together, I felt like I was building upon things that I already knew. So I definitely think that it comes down to being consistent. I think you can't study like once a month or like three times a month. You have to keep the knowledge flowing into your head, like, you know, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And, you know, the more that you do that, the easier it is to speak about these things and then also conduct different processes or, you know, conduct different things with different software manually. And I'm pretty sure for you, when you got that first job, it was like a hose of information. You're probably like, oh my God, this is so much. And I'm asking you this question because this happened to me when I first started. I was literally taking homework with me. Going at home, I was literally learning it at home too. I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to feel dumb. I want to feel like I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do some research on my own. Was that the case for you? Um, Believe it or not, my first position at Disney was a very interesting position in in the sense that I was expected to actually know a lot more than I did. And when I came in, it was almost like a fake it till you make it because I didn't really have any managers. I was literally out in the parks. I was like the IT guy that was there on site correspondence for issues. So a lot of times I'm being asked things in the merchandise managers or I'm being asked things by front entry about things I don't know about, but I learned about, I learned a way to still convey a sense of professionalism and a sense of, I guess, authority on the topic, even if I don't know anything about it. So a lot of times when I was there, I was just using skills that I had and coming up with things on the spot. My new position, however, where I'm dealing with remote monitoring and management and, you know, dealing with all sorts of technical um, tools and software, I have to go home and actually like take these like courses from my job and like really study the software because I'm supposed to be the specialist and I'm being asked, I'm I'm servicing MSPs who are servicing their clients. So the people I'm speaking with are technical. These are IT guys. These are chief op, you know, security officers. These guys know their stuff and I have to be a specialist in my product. So I'm definitely, you know, taking things home and studying things in my second job. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you. And then with, the, with those types of jobs, when you're working with vendors, you're working with this, I worked in an MSP company myself too. You have to know your stuff they'll know if you don't if you don't know what you're talking about because they're very technical so they know if you're BSing them or like oh he has no idea what he's talking about can we get somebody else so yeah. they know their stuff I like to ask this question have you ever suffered from imposter syndrome oh my gosh no it was terrible like honestly my first position um it was a contract position at Disney it was a 12 month contract and it's you not know contracts work they can only extend you for six more months so technically 18 months until they have to hire you or fire you so I always felt like I had a noose, you know, ready to dangling, you know, and while I was in that job, I was not really trained and I was just coming off a course that I had studied for for three weeks, you know, and now I'm in one of the biggest companies in the world at their park entry dealing with, you know, P1 incidents with Wi-Fi going down and I have everybody in the park running to me and I've only done IT for one month and uh, it is just, it's crazy, you know, I feel like I really became a man because, you know, just the way that I had to, you know, conduct myself, like I'm the IT guy, I'm the professional. Nobody knew that I had that amount of, I guess, length in the game, but I had skin in the game because I was putting so much time and studying so much and I was very good at finding information quickly so yeah man I walked around with imposter syndrome for those 10 months and then on that before the last two months ended I landed this job and while I'm in this job you know wow it was an insane learning curve very very you know um there was you know very very intimidating at first and also being in a hiring class with a lot of other guys you know there's other people with skills that I don't have and there's and, and, and seeing kind of where everybody is stacking up and and then seeing where I need to keep my head up too. So, you know, but I'm, I've been in it for about two months now. And, you know, I'm actually getting really good. Got on the leaderboards one week. So, you know, I'm feeling confident and really impressed myself. And actually now I think I'm an IT guy. Like I'm like, dude, like I'm out here reading logs and finding event codes and doing just all sorts of cool stuff that me a year ago, I would have been so impressed by. So like sometimes, you know, I got to take a step back and be like, yeah, you know, I'm doing good, but I definitely had impossible 
imposter syndrome when I started. I'm the same way. Even in this job that I'm in myself when I first started and, and they threw me in, they're like, okay, we need you to set up Sentinel from scratch. I'm like, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, you figure it out. I'm like, find out. Uh, find out. And like, That's I what we're paying you for. It's yeah, exactly. I set it up from scratch and then I threw my head in there. I started looking at logs. I started looking at things that are, that are connected and integrated with Sentinel. And then, you know, you combine that with Defender or XDR and then we start seeing data overflow and things going, getting coming in, coming in, coming out. You're looking at severity. You're looking at logs. You're looking at things that are important. You're looking at patch management. You're looking at CVEs. It's like overwhelming. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my God, so much, so much so information. Much. But it's fun. It's fun. It's really, really, really fun. And it's very good information. But yeah, yeah I totally can relate to you, man. I was just like, you get thrown out there, you know, you're oh, expected to learn. You'll learn a lot. And I think it's crazy because I learned so much and became compared to like, let's say my little brother who is just now starting. And then at the end of the course, you know, he had saw me and he thought I knew so much. But now, you know, he's like, now it's just it's night and day and it's you learn so much on the job there's so much training that it's like you can train for combat and, and on my team i'm always joking like guys let's get ready for combat because you know when things go live you know you got calls coming in emails chats you got to work on your backlog all sorts of things outages things are crazy so it's like you don't know what it's like in, in combat until you've done it a couple times now you're like kind of like a veteran so it's fun and it's intimidating but it's rewarding once you i'll be sitting there i'll be putting my hand Ends up like once I found the problem and I found them the resolved and their issue has been resolved and I get the, this good survey, it's it's lovely. So yeah, man, it's super rewarding, super fun. I hundred percent agree. You're the same with me. Like when I find it, when I find a problem and I fix it, I'm like, I got one. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm yeah, it's really. Really exciting stuff for you. Like I know you did the FedEx thing and you had the injury. Have you ever thought ever would ever get into IT? Like have you ever thought about that? Nah, man. Actually, I have one core memory of my friend in high school when we were all talking about what we're doing. I, I wanted to be a dentist, and then I remember my friend saying, "Yeah, man, like I'm going to UCF for IT." And I looked at him, and, man. I thought he was the lamest dude on the planet. Like I, it's just this memory I can never get out. And I remember I bumped into him at the bar when we were like. 23 man i i think it was right before i got into fedex or something and then at that point he had probably been into it you know we probably graduated or, i just remember like thinking like dang like i wonder how his life is like i thought he was a nerd and then i got in the field and now I'm, and now everybody knows me as the it guy and everybody i go to the barber shop and they're like yeah my friend does it and cybersecurity, and, and i'm like that's me like oh shoot okay what's up like, uh, <laughs> yeah no it's wild man i never thought but i love it that's awesome like me me i I started, I started out in gaming. I did I did a lot of I did a lot of video games. I played a lot of video games. I, I guess people will call me a nerd. I actually wouldn't play a lot of video games. Collect the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards, Digimon cards. Play the console games, Nintendo, Nintendo 64. Um, collected the Pokédex, Digimon, Digivice. You know, old school gamer. Uh, people will call me a, call me like a nerd, like a really typical nerd. <laughs> like this guy's a typical. Nah, and you're cool, bro. <laughs> That's cool in my book, man. Yeah. So like I told you, I got into IT, and, and um, yeah, and then my my journey was just like yours. Like I got I did. The NYPD, the Dan PD restaurant and got into it. And I, I can't tell everyone, like, you could get into IT, like, even if you don't have that background, like, everyone has a, a unique story, just like yours, like, like, we're interviewing today, and you have a really unique story. And coming from that, me working in restaurant, I know you, you come from working for FedEx, you're like, you get like that, I know this never happened to you, for me, it was like, I don't even know if I'm smart enough to be in IT or do this job or be here. Like, I, like when I first started and I got into IT, I'm like, I don't even know if I could do this job, or I don't even know I could get into this job, I didn't even know IT was a thing that ever happened to you yeah man just a couple of weeks ago when i'm learning you know my product and learning the tools that i'm going to be using and you know get thrown out to the wolves and you know i'll come home and I'm, i would tell myself can i do this but it was never like i don't think i could do this i just never let myself say that because it was like there's nothing else i could do man like this is my thing that i got good at just because it was super hard and super confusing and man it looked like i'm reading chinese and they're asking me about a million things i don't know but just slowly but surely you know i was like i can you know i'm going to do this like i can do this and i just kept on pushing through and now you know i'm so glad i did because you know i just think you don't grow unless you're uncomfortable you can't do anything you can't be great unless you go through a period of, of being uncomfortable and every time i've been uncomfortable i've just flourished and done cool things so you know with that position you know I, it's same thing with when i first started it was like there's no looking back i can't go back to my i was sometimes think man i was at disney not doing nothing man like I was chilling and now I'm here and I don't know what I'm doing but nah man like I, I'm, I'm 
I'm getting there. I'm killing it. And, uh, you know, it's just all about how much grit and grind that you have in you. If you have it in you, you're going to be just fine. And you're going to actually make a lot of money in this field, which is, which is lovely. Those are like words of, words of wisdom for me. When I, I tell everyone, like, I tell everyone, you're not growing if you're not getting out of your comfort zone. It's just the reality of jobs and everything. You're not going to, you gotta, you gotta get out of your comfort zone. And then the other thing I always tell everyone, people look at me like I'm crazy, which is absolutely true is I'd rather be the dumbest person in the room to be the smartest person in the room. I'd rather be in a room where I go into the room and people are much smarter than me than them being you know less smarter than me. Because I, the, if I'm in a room where people are smarter than me, that means I'm in, I have the opportunity to grow and the opportunity to learn. 100%. So if you're in a room where you're not learning at all, you're going to have to find a different room. That's just, I'm just being realistic. So it's just like, those are the things I tell like my students, people that I train and mentor. I tell them, if you're not learning, if you're not learning or doing anything productive, then what's the point, right? Like, you just gotta be better than that, right? We get better every day, right? There's always tomorrow, right? You get better every single day. Every single day, do something productive, and uh, it's okay. It's okay to take breaks when you can, but like, you know, try to learn as much as you can, but don't overdo it, you know? Exactly. Don't burn yourself out and you know, just put that time in to really build yourself. And as long as you build yourself and you don't burn yourself out, you can keep it up. It's crazy what you can do. Yeah, ex exactly. And and um, and and, I, and I'm I'm pretty sure like if you were over in a time machine, you were probably would have given your FedEx self a, a different advice, a probably oh God, a kick man. a kick in the butt. Like you should have got into IT earlier or sooner. Dude, when I was 18, man, when I got out, I should have went and did IT with, with with my friend that went and did that. If I would have did that, it would be crazy right now. But you know what? Hindsight's 2020, and, you know, I'm just happy that things are going in the right direction, and I'm just going to try to keep steering the ship in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you again. And I was going to say, like, a lot of people that, that watch this channel, and I'm pretty sure you, I'm not sure if you ever get this, but I'm pretty sure you probably do. And it's like, it's good to see a lot. Of, it's good to see a lot of people that are in IT that look like us. So, like, no. there, there's a, uh, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a uh, Spanish Heritage Month coming up soon um, for this video because I'm going to upload this video and um, it's coming up soon. And basically, there's a lot, a lot of IT people that you don't see a lot of IT people that are Hispanics in IT. So like to see you and see me and other people is always it's always good to see other people that look like us, you know, in, in, in IT. It's great, man. It's great. It's great seeing that, you know, that knowledge spread. The more people get interested in the field and, you know, the more that that happens, the smarter, you know, more intelligent talent is going to be in the field and it's just going to be great. You you know, the knowledge transfer I'm excited to you know be a part of it and you know i'm excited that you're a part of it too bro yeah and that's the thing with me that's why that's why you see me like and, and i'm gonna throw this in this video is like i you know i, I work for rice and cyber because we do training for latinos latinas and then we work with blacks in cyber security because we're trying to get more minorities in it and it's one of those things is that we need more minorities in it and and and, and i'm not telling you i'm saying like basically you're saying like don't be afraid don't be afraid to get into it like you could do it yourself like we're doing it right now you could do it too exactly. right? You could do it and be successful and do it. Exactly. So is there any final words you want to say or like some words of wisdom before we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah. I can just say I think that when you're getting in the IT field, it's super important that you use all the knowledge bases that you can. Use YouTube, you know, use Google and Google everything. Find a program that works for you, you know, make sure you do the research and, you know, it's something that other people have had success in and then really dive head first in that um, I think building a portfolio is probably the most important thing that you can do to separate yourself in this job market right now. So if you go and you learn the groundwork, ground knowledge, and then you build a portfolio, you're going to have a lot of success in these job interviews, be able to pass these technical interviews, and uh, you're actually going to be able to get your foot in the door in an industry that has like uncapped potential, easy six figures once you're in a couple of years. So just stick it out in the beginning, learn this knowledge. There's no governing body you don't need a specific license to get this job it's not like a doctor it's not like a lawyer it's not like a counselor you just learn these skills past that interview and you could be supporting your family you know forever so yeah that, that i think that's that's what that's my final one right there <laughs> very good advice and I'm, I'm terrible with your name how do you say your name again yeah bro my name's nemesio nemesio yes, and nemesio thank you for giving us some some of your time. I know you are super busy yourself and I, I appreciate this interview and that's it. I hope everyone has a good one and I'm gonna stop recording.